In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these cargo containers that look like this. It is a bit of a terrain classic because I think like everybody has made a version of them. But you know, I'm going to show you how to do my version. So let's do it. To start with, we're going to make a cuboid. So that's basically a box, which is rectangular. And the actual dimensions of mine are going to be seven centimeters tall, seven centimeters like deep and 15 centimeters wide. Now I will put the dimensions of my exact box in the template including each piece i will do a 14 by 6 centimeter piece i'll do two of those and then i'll do a 14 by 7 meter piece and i'll do two of those and then for the ends i just do a 7 by 7 bit of foam board and i'm using your standard foam board it's cheap it's cheerful if you're going to do your own measurements you need to consider the thickness of your foam board or whatever material you're working with so i cut that out of foam board you can obviously do as many of them as you want i'm gonna do three and then to assemble the box, I just use hot glue because it's easy and quick. Now, when you're gluing your box together, you need to consider that you don't want to end up with your last piece being wedged in between two pieces. So what I mean by that is it's generally better that your last piece is glued onto something rather than in between something. So just keep that in mind. So in this case, I glue the shorter ends to the longer side. Um, I do both of that to the longer side and then I just add on the last longer side and it works fine. And then obviously I just sandwich it together with the ends. And then we use some corrugated card that I got from a hobby shop. It's better to do that than scavenge it from like some cardboard box that you've got because you'll be there all day. And we're going to cut these to be to fit all of the sides barring the door. So that's three of the long sides, the top, the sides and the back. And we're going to ignore the door. In this case, it's a 15 centimeter long piece by uh, seven centimeters. And I do that three times. That'll cover the top and the sides. And then for the back, it's just a seven by seven piece. And then you just glue that to your foam board box. I'm just using PVA, speed it about with my hand, but you could just use a paintbrush or you know something more reasonable than your hand. And you will notice that there's some gaps where the, the, the corrugation doesn't quite line up with the next bit of corrugation. That's fine because we're gonna cover that in a moment. Now I'm gonna provide a template here, which is basically going to be the rims that frame the sides of the tops and stuff like that you don't necessarily have to do this and in fact it might even be more awkward to do this but the reason I did it like this is so that I could avoid um, any gaps now it doesn't end up working perfectly but just make if you if you're gonna do my method you can obviously just print the template if you're gonna do it yourself then just use something like five millimeter strips and just sort of glue them around every frame uh, except the door because we do the door at the end and I'll explain why. So I, I cut uh, this out, out of some reasonably thick card and then I just glue this to my box. Uh, obviously I fold it in the right places but you wouldn't have to do that if you're doing strips. Now I do make a little bit of a mistake here because in some places I tried to I use some PVA and I use some super glue and the super glue sort of it was a bit runny and it ran down the card which sort of ended up looking ugly but honestly when you painted it you didn't really notice that. I would have just used PVA completely because it's easier and less messy and you know you don't, you're not going to stick your fingers together or anything like that. Maybe a little bit of super glue just at the bottom to make sure that everything holds together. Do that for all of them of course. Also we're going to do, I have I've provided a template for the back but you can obviously just do strips but we're going to do that on the back of it as well. As I said we're not doing this on the door and that's because of the next phase. Now the door is probably the more complicated bit here. So what I'm, the way I'm gonna do mine, and you can do this any way you like, is I'm gonna take a piece of card, seven by seven, and basically I'm going to draw my design onto that. Now initially, when I looked at reference photos, I was only gonna do like one horizontal line, but it really ended up looking better with two. It's not realistic, there would maybe be panels on it and stuff like that, but that was what I did. So my design is basically, um, I've got, I, I did look at reference photos but basically I've got two vertical lines and two horizontal lines uh, with a little gap in the middle and the way that I'm going to achieve that gap is the 7x7 seven seven bit of card I'm literally just going to cut it in half and then I'm going to glue that card onto the end of the, the box but I'm going to make sure that there's a tiny bit of a gap and that's obviously because it's a door you know it's unrealistic because you probably wouldn't notice a gap at that scale but that's why I did it. And then I put the frame on. So this is where I do the five millimeter strips around the side. Obviously I'm doing my little template, but you know, do it whichever way you've done. And the reason it's important to draw it on before you do this is because it's gonna be difficult to draw it on after the fact. There's many different things you could use here. Plastic styrene rods, uh, toothpicks, 
barbecue skewers, they might be a bit big. Um, I think Black Magic Craft use spaghetti. There's <laughs> quite a few different things you could use. What I'm actually going to use here is some florist wire. Florist? Florist? Sounds weird when I say it. Um, it's very thin and it's mostly straight, but it is basically just a very thin bit of wire. Uh, you could measure this if you wanted, but all I do is I line it up to um, on the box because I've already drawn where I want this and I just snip it so that it's the right size. I do the vertical lines first and then for the horizontal lines, I um, obviously I don't glue it over the ones that already exist. I sort of snip them so that it comes straight up to the wire and then it stops. And I literally just glue that on with some PVA. I do add a half centimetre by half centimetre bit of square card just in the middle because it seems like that would maybe be like the locking me mechanism. Either way, just added a little bit of detail to it and it was dead easy to do. That's the box built. Now for painting, if you have a spray paint that is colour matched to one that you've got, you know as a normal paint then do feel free to spray it but I didn't really have that so the way that I did this I spray the whole thing black sort of do like a zenithal highlight with a bit of grey and then all I do is I paint it three different colours so in this case I'm going to go with red blue and green because that's the classic some people do yellow but I don't think I like painting yellow so I didn't bother paint it two thin coats will cover the whole thing and then if you want to do any lettering on it, you're going to probably need a stencil. Now I actually just bought these three cheap stencils off Amazon for like three quid. But you could maybe if you wanted to get some card, cut like get a design offline and sort of just cut it out onto some card. Uh, but uh, yeah, the stencil's easy. And then I, I do think you're going to need uh, either a spray paint or an airbrush. No, because I tried to dab it on with a, um, a brush that didn't work and then I realized like a sponge would have been a pain um, so what I did was I just used um, a spray can a white spray can I tried to measure it but I was very inaccurate but it doesn't really matter and then you just take your original colour and make sure that where there's any bit of like frosting because the corrugated card is like lumpy sometimes when you spray it a bit of the paint is going sort of through the gaps so you might end up with um, your lettering not being perfectly straight that's why you then take your original paint just go over the edges and uh, call it a day so after i'd done the stenciling on the containers i was going to like print out some signs just onto some paper and like glue it to it uh, which you obviously can do but i'd run out of orange ink so i ended up not doing that and then what i did i took a bit of brown paint and i sort of just like stippled on a bit of brown paint anywhere where maybe the card wasn't perfectly smooth or you know that super glue that i mentioned before i just put brown paint on it just uh, in little splotches and then i did the same thing with a, um, a dark silver what i actually did was i mixed the silver paint with a bit of brown and just did that over some of the like corners and the bits where i'd done it brown just to make it look a little bit rusted give it that sort of subtle effect of it being metallic without going overboard and then i made a homemade uh, blacky brown wash and just painted the whole thing now it was a little bit weird because on on the white bits it sort of like pulled up in areas so i tried to do it as smooth as possible on the white bits and then everywhere else i just let it be whatever um and yeah that was pretty much it i actually really like the effect i think they look pretty decent pretty easy to do bit time consuming before we look at the prettier pictures if you did like the video do like and subscribe it really helps if you want to go the extra mile and support the channel further do consider patreon anyway let's 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 look at them uh, looking at them now, I'm pretty happy with the way they've turned out. I think just doing a wash over it has really added to sort of like that gritty uh, effect. I haven't dry brushed anything over that. I've just left it um, after the wash. The only thing that I would possibly have a problem with, so to speak, would be the doors. In the sense that the way that I've done my doors, isn't, they're not, it's not particularly realistic. But um, I do feel like having the two horizontal lines uh, actually sort of like makes it look a bit more realistic on the table technically the doors have like uh, m bigger panels and gaps and stuff like that however you know um, on the table you're not really going to notice it uh yeah the only other problem would be uh, getting the stencil you could either use a proper stencil like i did or maybe cut a version out of paper and um yeah that's that's it i think it looks good i'm pretty happy with them it did take me a little while uh, the video here is going to be quite quick but it actually took me uh, several hours to make them I'm, I'm not 100 sure why i think it's just because of the way i was cutting out the card um, i do think you might be better actually not using the template for the rims and just cutting out cards and just trying to like hide the gaps like i don't necessarily think you'll notice them that much anyway but you know i didn't want to take that risk so i didn't and to be fair on the edges there still are a little bit of gaps so i didn't even necessarily succeed 
take your pick, it is what it is. Ultimately, I think they look fine. They don't cost very much, it's just foam board, corrugated card, and that's pretty much about it, depending what you use for the end. Have a most beautiful day. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.